Hey there folks and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. We're starting this video off with a bit of a predicament. Yes, I got this Jeep Wrangler stuck. I wanted to see how deep the snow had to be before it got stuck and I found out. So we're comparing it to the 4Runner today. Matt's just lining up our 4Runner for us and we're gonna pull it out of here. It's a good excuse to show you the recovery hook down there, which is easy to get to. And there's Matt. What are we gonna hook to on the 4Runner, Matt, the hitch? Probably just go around the hitch, I guess. Yeah, that's the easiest spot. And uh, hopefully we can pull this Jeep out of here and uh, make a video today. Normally when we go off-road, I got my big rubber boots on because we're out in the mud, but today we've got tons of white stuff, which means I'm probably gonna need these things. You've already seen it. This Jeep Wrangler got stuck. That doesn't matter though. We're still going off-road today because I want to see how it stacks up to this Toyota 4Runner. Plus, I've brought my brother along for this one, so it's gonna be a fun day. Everybody. We're out here in the snow today and I think we really need to talk about these tires. The manufacturers put these tires on the cars. We didn't really have a choice in them. And over here on the 4Runner, I've got a set of Bridgestone Blizzak winter tires. Yeah, you're a little more prepped for today than I am. I have the stock tires that come on this Wrangler Sahara. That is a set of Goodyear Wranglers with Kevlar protection. They are M plus S rated, that's mud and snow, but still I, I think Matt's a little better prepped today than I am. I didn't get stuck yet. <laughs> So we are running the 2021 4Runner today, but it is still running the older V6 power plant. Now this engine makes 270 horsepower, but it is a tried and tested platform. So I have some pretty high hopes for it out here today in the snow. Now, when we're talking engines, this isn't straight apples to apples today, but I have to mention, Matthew has the only engine you can get in the 4Runner. I have one of the three different options you can get here in the Wrangler, and today it is the Eco Diesel. That means I'm making 260 horsepower and 442 pound-feet of torque, and all that torque should help me on the trail. Let's look deeper into what I brought today. So this is the Wrangler Sahara. Now the Sahara is basically the on-road Wrangler, the one you buy to go to the mall. And yet that doesn't actually matter because you still get over 40 degrees of approach. You still get 10 inches of ground clearance. So even though this isn't the Rubicon, it still offers some pretty good off-road numbers. And really what I want to stress here is just choices. If you come to Jeep and buy a Wrangler, you can get a two-door, a four-door. Like I mentioned, all those different engine options, different transfer cases, different four-wheel drive systems. Now let's go to the back of the Wrangler and we'll look at what goes on back here because both of these vehicles actually have a lot of interesting things on the rear end. So first of all, everyone knows this about Wranglers, full size spare tire, easy to access on the back. Now the Wrangler has a swing gate, can be a little bit annoying, but however, once you open this glass, you do get all of this opening to load stuff into the back of your Jeep, and I do appreciate that. A decent amount of space back here, a couple of D-rings to tie stuff down. Um, yeah, you know what, I think the Wrangler offers a pretty good amount of utility, although that 4Runner's got some cool stuff going on in the back too, so let Matt show you that now. So what I brought today is the 2021 4Runner Trail Edition. Now, this is new for this year, and the trail actually comes in almost as a base model, but it is a value package. And what you get with that package is a lot of styling features, more or less. You get the blacked out badges on the front, the 17 inch alloy wheels on the sides, and as you're coming around the side here, we got the roof rack, you got a lot of cargo space back here, and one of the coolest features on this Trail Edition is this pull-out cargo tray. You can put up to 440 pounds on that. So just for uh, argument's sake, I had a big breakfast, but I mean, that's pretty comfortable for me. You got a couple of gear hooks on here, but in addition to this, you also have a ton of storage. You got a lot of bins here on the side, D-rings to tie things down with, and on the hatch, this window does go down so you can access things in the trunk. And again, it's not as cool as an outside spare, but I do have a full-size spare up underneath. Might be problematic on the trail, but still nice to have. All right, everybody, time to hit the snowy trail. Matt and I are here in the 4Runner. We're gonna take the 4Runner first to break the trail because it's got the winters on we, it. We had a rough experience with the Jeep this morning, so we think this might be a little safer. Yeah. A little less work for later. It should be, hopefully. Um, and we're in four high. The only other system we have here is A-Track, which is Toyota's uh, brake-based traction control. It's not even turned on right now. So for now, let's just go in four high and 
see what happens, man. All right, fresh snow breaking. Here Hit we it. go. A little bit of a pile there. Come on, baby. Oh, we got some spin for sure. <laughs> That's okay. There's a lot of ice underneath the snow. We had a bit of rain up here, so I know, uh-oh. Oh, that's uh -oh. not good. <laughs> well, just like last week, we already got a tree down. All right, yeah. Matt, you hold still, I got her. You got it? Okay. Luckily, this isn't a big one. Hopefully, I can get her out of the way, though. I think it'll break. Yeah, I think you're good now. You should break it. I couldn't. Yep. <laughs> Did that break it? No, it's still good. Yeah, keep rolling, Matt. Let's get the Jeep through. Stupid stick. Stupid tree. We'll have to roll back here with the chainsaw. But for now, we're through. Let's keep on keeping on. Oh, Whew, it's cold out there. What does the truck say it is today? Minus six out today. It's, Minus it's six brisk. Celsius, yeah. And that's in, in the sun at noon, so this is the warmest it's getting today. So we made it to the trail, so now we're gonna start the left hook. Yeah, let's hit the left hook, see how she does. All right. Oh. <laughs> Dig in right off the bat. <laughs> she gets going okay, though. Um, now, I can't see anything. Oh, and this snow is deep, man. These are big holes here, too, in the trail. Nice right. forerunner. <laughs> doing okay. Doing okay. Large <laughs> hundred by. Yeah, not bad, man. I've actually been pretty impressed, and I think it's all tires so far. Yeah, no. Especially because we know the clearances in the Jeep are a little bit better. Now, we are about to approach the mud section in the summer. I suspect the ice is thick enough you won't it, even break through. The lake, the lake ice has got eight inches, so exactly. I imagine back here we're pretty solid. This is what is normally the deep section in the summertime. Um, I, and we don't know how really deep the snow is or if the ice is gonna hold. There's and a lot I, of I variables just, here. I just mentioned to Steve too, this is the first time I've run this trail since they finished it. <laughs> yeah. I, I helped build the other side. I'm familiar with the other side. This side's new to me. Yeah. So, uh, and at the end of the mud pit, we have the hill. So once we get going, we ain't stopping. All right, hit it, man. Let's see how she does. Oh, we broke through there. Oh, I broke through a bit there. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh, we oh. broke through again there. <laughs> <laughs> She's chugging. Okay, we're, we're flinging mud and up, snow. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep I got it up. no speed here. You got it. I wanted keep some it up. speed. She's spinning. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> you got it. You got it. Actually, control's kicking in there. Nicely done. But we did it. Holy cow. So we didn't. So this is a base model forerunner. We have no locking diffs, nothing like that. All open differentials. There was a ton of wheel spinach there, but credit to these bozaks, they got her done. And we're gonna have to go back and take out my curse words. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll beep them out. <laughs> Talk to me about the four liter power, because definitely this engine is old. It's been around for a while. Five speed automatic. Um, it, Call it, it a dinosaur if you will. When I put my foot into it, it's there. Okay. Um, now on the flip side, we'll talk about this more on road, but I did tow with this vehicle and that was a different experience. Yeah. That was doggy. But out here, get your jam into it. I think I just <laughs> spun all four wheels just nice. for the hell of it. Yeah, the low end feels pretty good. It doesn't want to quit, which is great. All right, well, stop her right here. We That's made the it end around. of the hook. Now we're going to get in the Jeep and see how she does. I don't know about that hill. <laughs> All right, Matt, it's Wrangler time. All Let right. me show you uh, how this is done, shall we? Uh, <laughs> um, well, I made it through without getting stuck, so. <laughs> so, what I should mention is, even though this isn't the off-road Wrangler, these vehicles are actually pretty well matched up. What I mean by that is no locking differentials. And the only real off-road system I have in the Wrangler is hill descent control. Besides that, it's all just uh, my right foot. And of course, full-time four-wheel drive. Yeah. Now our Wrangler has one more trick up its sleeve. And while I was editing this video, I noticed something that I want to show you guys. In this drone shot of dad and I doing donuts together, you can actually see the limited slip in action versus an open diff. So behind the Wrangler, you will see two shoots of snow. Basically, that means that both tires are getting power. Whereas when the Forerunner does donuts, only one shoot of snow comes out behind it because in an open diff, only one tire is going to get all of the power. So this pretty well demonstrates the difference. Although now you can see how the Wrangler did with its limited slip off-road.
I'm really excited about this part because this is the part that made me curse and pucker up real good. <laughs> so I'm curious to see how we do. Now, right now I want to mention weight real quick before I get onto this ice. This Wrangler today is actually a little bit heavier than the 4Runner, only because of the diesel. With the diesel, we're talking about adding three to 400 pounds over the gas engine. If this was a 3.6 liter Wrangler, I'd be lighter. But today with this diesel, she's a heavy beast. Only, not by much though. No. I think you only got me beat by about 70 pounds, was it? I'm 47, 37 pounds. Oh, I broke through there oh, though. Oh, oh. She's breaking through more. Uh -oh. Come on, Wrangler. Chug Wrangler. We're going. Keep Chug going. Wrangler, yes. Yep, yep, yep. Not bad. Not bad, actually. These tires Tire are good. doing better here than this I thought. This rock section, though. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh, oh. No, baby. Okay, that's it. That's it. She hopped up on that rock, and then I just started spinning. I can get out and spot you. Yeah, you guys both spot I'm me. I'm going to holler at you. Open some windows up. Yeah. Straight on? I would go straight on, and then make the turn once you're bumped over. Okay, ready? Okay, we're going to try it again. Come on, Jeep. There yeah, it is. baby. There it is. There it is. Stay in it, stay in it, stay in it. In oh, but I'm sliding right. off up here now. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Now it's just struggling in the snow. You can come back. I'm going to try to center it a little. You can come back and you can get in my ruts. You, That's got, what I'm... you got a couple feet until you get back to there. Come about another two feet my way. Right there. Cut hard to me. Hard to me. Yeah. Okay. Now you're in the ruts I broke. Come on! <laughs> right there, stop. Don't go further than that because you're getting back to the rock. Come there on, there, there, we go. there, you go, there we go. There we go, gotta Jake. keep into it. Well, everyone, I think what we just witnessed right there were the difference in tires, and of course, I mean, they're not stock tires on the 4Runner. I know that it's not a straight apples to apples comparison, but if you just want to, you know, understand the difference between a dedicated winter and then something that's just M plus S rated, you just saw it. This tire did, I don't know, what, 70, 80% of what the other tire did, but that last 20% for getting you up and over those important little ice hills or snowy rocks, whatever it happens to be, it does make a big difference getting those dedicated winters. So the Toyota lulled me into a full sense of security back there. I left my coat behind, which wasn't fun. <laughs> well, that's why you gotta start working hard, right? You warm up. We got it through though. <laughs> we did get it through. And I've and I talked a lot about tires now, but the other thing I wanna mention is weight. Again, this is a little bit heavier. And uh, especially in conditions like this, weight is your enemy. So this thing was just held back that much more on that hill. Now again, I'm back deep. in the... It is. You can see where the skid plate on the Toyota dug in too. Yeah, absolutely. Now I don't feel any of that here in the no. Jeep. I, it More seems though we're clearing it. Yeah. And I mentioned the angles are great here, you know, over 40 degrees of approach, but none of that can overcome tires at the end of the day. Not, not out here today. That's the most important thing. Now how does the power feel off-road? Like, I can feel the torque. I can feel the torque as a passenger. Yeah. How does it feel on your side? That's the key torque. Actually, what I what I think is most important is uh, easy to modulate. It's not jumpy. You don't get any of that kind of turbo buildup, spool, any of that. Um, and then, yeah, there's so much power there. And I did put it in four low. We needed all the tricks this Wrangler had to get up that hill. And in four low, the power's epic. Uh, it's a 2.71 to 1 low range ratio. Um, not bad, not you know as aggressive as the Rubicon, but enough to give you the power to get through stuff like that. Well, Matt, uh, I think we've successfully off-roaded these two. But especially, I think a lot of people these days with the Sahara model, with the 4Runner, they're buying these to cruise around on road. So we're going to go hit the highway now and we'll talk to you a little bit more about how these things are on the road. It is nice to know that if you get stuck, you can get out. Absolutely, that <laughs> is true. And uh, the capability in either one of these is pretty, uh, pretty amazing and definitely a step above most other SUVs and crossovers on the market. Forget about the Jeep for a second, let's talk 4Runner. And you have to start off by talking about its age. And some people say it's tried and true, which is, you know, fair, but on the flip side, it's a five-speed automatic. Toyota, you need more gears. Straight up, you're never gonna get good fuel economy out of a five-speed plus this four-liter, um, it's got power, but you, I mean, I find you really got to put your foot into it. You know, you got to dig into it. So it uses quite a bit of fuel. <laughs> it certainly, since I've picked it up, 
uh, a lot of highway driving, in-town driving, and I, I live a little bit more rural, so it's a lot of higher speed roads, if you will. I've been running just under 13s. Now, yesterday... Liters per 100. Liters per 100 kilometers, sorry. <laughs> now, yesterday, I had about 2,000 pounds of wood in my little utility trailer, and I towed that about... If I had to eyeball it, 50 kilometers. And it was running, by the time I got home, I was up over 14 liters per hundred. Sure. And that, just considering how far I'd driven already, for it to affect the average consumption that quickly over a short distance, you know this thing was chewing through fuel. It's a lot like the Tundra, actually, this 4Runner, in, in so much that they just haven't updated it in forever. They left the old technology. Power-wise, it feels okay, but the fuel economy is just not there. Um, but comparing it to the Jeep, when you're on road, the 4Runner is just straight up better. I mean, it's a much more sorted out ride. You're not sawing at the wheel like you do in the Wrangler. Um, yeah, I don't know. To me, this thing on road is just much more comfortable. I think the best way to put it, easier to drive. Driving a Wrangler, it takes a bit of effort. You gotta be paying attention. On a windy day, you're working <laughs> that wheel. It, the 4Runner is point and shoot easy, It's right? sturdy, and I've said this about the other Toyota products as well. You get this very on-center steering feel, um, as in it's tight. I know if I turn it a little bit, like it, there's no there's no sway to it. There's no um, free play, as it were. Mm -hmm. And I know definitely in the Jeep, there's been times where I'm driving it and I'm like, hey, I'm pulling the wheel. Why is the nose not following? Totally, absolutely. And 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 it's like that in the Wrangler to accommodate for off roading. And once again, I will say I think the Jeep is set up more for off roading straight out of the box yeah. than the Four Runner is. But this always, you know, it comes back to what you're going to do with it. If your vehicle is going to live on the pavement for 90% of its life, you might be better served with the Toyota. However, if you love off-roading, if it's all you ever want to do, I still kind of lean Wrangler. I mean, set up for off-roading right out of the box, your words, you got stuck, I didn't. <laughs> so, and that these are both, quote, right out of the box. You're right, you're right. Now, you're again, right. It's all tires, tires versus tires. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> if I had like tires, I think it would have been different. Um, but you're absolutely right about that. And I don't have the most off-road ready Wrangler today either, right? Yeah. Um, but on the flip side, my Sahara, way more luxurious than this 4Runner, yeah. way more features, but also way more expensive. And uh, I think we should go hop over in that Jeep and see what it's like now. So now we're here in my Wrangler Sahara, and I have to say, Matt, climbing in, this is just so much nicer, right? I have these really comfortable leather seats, leather wrapped steering wheel, heated steering wheel. That's not on the 4Runner. Oh, I, I miss that. Heated seats here. Plus, I noticed that 4Runner doesn't even have a sunroof. Here we have the one touch open sky roof. I can open up this entire thing with just the touch of a button. Please don't. So, <laughs> fair cold. enough. It's, it's a little cold today. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this Wrangler is actually loaded with a whole bunch of pretty luxurious features. For what is kind of an off-road vehicle. Now this is the Sahara trim, so it's kind of you know upmarket a little bit, but yeah, I got all the nice stuff. Now, I don't know if you can hear how hard I'm about to roll my eyes. What does this cost you though? Because when I get in the forerunner sitting at just a hair under 48, I don't feel too bad about what I spent. Yeah, this one is about 72,000 bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, of course, these are Canadian prices, but yeah, this Wrangler is expensive. 72 grand. Um, this diesel alone is a $9,000 option. Now, I'm sure the fuel economy is going to be good, but man, nine grand? You got to do a lot of miles to make that balance out. Exactly. I just, I don't think you're ever going to make that money back. In the U.S., it's $6,000 for the diesel, so not much better. Um, and yes, yeah. At their top levels, fully loaded, the Jeep is nicer inside. That's my yep. opinion, but I think it's pretty much we'll, a fact. The we'll concede. The materials are nicer, the infotainment is better, the cameras look nicer. Over here in the Wrangler too, you got the diesel option and you're thinking to yourself, I've upgraded, I've got all the oomph to do all the towing, but you still only get 3,500 pound tow rating. Yeah. Whereas in the 4Runner, sure, old engine, not great on fuel, but you got 5,000 pounds, which is significant. I mean, that's the difference between comfortably towing my trailer full of wood versus not comfortably towing my trailer full of wood. Fair enough. Another thing we have to talk about is interior dimensions. And actually, Matthew and I here are both new dads, so it's more important to us than ever having a spacious rear seat. And you know what? You're actually going to get more space out of this Wrangler. I have 38.3 inches of rear seat legroom, whereas the 4Runner has... Just 32. 
you know, it's funny, the 4Runner almost looks like a bigger vehicle from outside, but yet you actually have less space in the rear seat, but also a shorter wheelbase. And going a little further on the topic of rear seat safety, it's not something we get into a lot, but in a Jeep Wrangler, you have to. Now, one of the reasons, or one of the things that the Jeep gives up are rear side curtain airbags. You do not get those in a Jeep Wrangler. So if you do get T-boned, you don't have any protection for your rear seat passengers between them and the glass beside them. I'm not saying the Wrangler is unsafe and the crash test ratings it's done are not horrible, but uh, yeah, you don't get those rear side curtains. And that speaks a lot, I think, to Toyota in general, because even on that base model trail, you get Toyota Safety Sense. True. So you get all of the lane keeping assist, you get the um, forward collision warning, you get the uh, blind spot monitor, adaptive as well cruise. as the adaptive cruise. And I know over here, that was an option, or okay. built into one of the packages. It's an option, exactly. Whereas you that comes for standard on, I'm pretty sure, every Toyota across the board it at this does. point. It does, yep, that's true. So yeah, Toyota's really building that value into those base models. Hey, you finally get unstuck back there? <laughs> yes, I got unstuck. And you know what, I think that's it for our day off-road. Um, so, what's your verdict on the 4Runner? These were two very different vehicles off-road, i.e. they were both capable. I liked them both off-road. I mean, obviously the Wrangler struggled a little bit, but again, we think that was more tires than anything else. They were able to do the same thing, but ultimately I think I was more impressed with this 4Runner because of the price point. So I saved that $25,000 and I could do everything that the Jeep could do. Now going down the highway would I be happier with the bigger radio and the heated seats probably but I don't feel that I'm being cheated in this package over here and we had a heck of a lot of fun getting buried and getting unstuck <laughs> all right well get out of here keep going there's some trails you can't make it down so here we go <laughs> Well, everybody, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please go below, leave us a comment. Let me know which one of these you would take, the Wrangler or the 4Runner. As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit that subscribe button, hit the join button to become a member of the Truck King YouTube channel, and as always, come right back here to Truck King to see what we are testing next. See ya.